Good morning, all. So the story continues to be uh, the Fissure 8 eruption. It continues to produce fountains up to around 220 feet high. And there's a vigorous channelized flow that's sending lava to the northeast along Highway 132 to the Kapoho area. And as of 1030 last night, lava was reported entering the ocean. And as of 6.30 this morning, that ocean entry had created a delta that extended a few hundred yards into the bay. Uh, other fissures are inactive except for a sluggish flow in the vicinity of fissure 18. There are some gas emissions from fissures 9 and 10, some incandescence of, uh, from fissure 16. There's also a lava breakout <clears throat> excuse me, that's occurring upslope of, Kapo of the Kapoho Cone Cinder Pit. There are active flows uh, that are about 330 yards southeast of the intersection of Railroad Avenue and Cinder Road. So this activity on the lower eastern zone, the hazards that are in place, uh, uh, in addition to the normal lava flow hazards, are Pele's hair from the high fountain. These are uh, thin strands of volcanic glass that can be blown downwind. And then also with the um, uh, new ocean entry lays or lava haze, uh, which is a plume of uh, seawater steam, um, hydrochloric acid, gas, and uh, tiny particles of volcanic glass uh, creates a hazard. And that, that hazard uh, in the immediate area of the ocean entry is, is uh, certainly serious. It dissipates rather qu quickly as the lays is blown away from the ocean entry. The total area covered by lava is now probably right around um, 20 square kilometers. As of 6 p.m. yesterday, it was 19.9 square kilometers, and so there's been additional lava erupted. So it's, it's on the order of, um, we round the numbers on the order of 5,000 acres. Yes, I'm going to start agriculture. Thank you. Uh, regarding lays, uh, Janet, you said it dissipates rather fairly quickly. Um, can you uh, give more detail, like how far it can travel, and uh, I don't know if it depends on the wind speed, um, and is it different for the glass and the hydrogen sulfide in terms of the distance? Um, and then, you know, related to that, is there concern that if people are, you know, somewhere to the southwest that they you know, that haven't evacuated, that, that this is a concern for them, or are they far enough away that it's not a concern? Okay, this is Janet Babb, USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. So the lays is an issue, certainly, in the immediate area of the ocean entry. And I think even, um, you know, when you see the big white plume coming up there, that plume looks rather innocuous. But it's actually, um, you know, this, this steam of seawater steam. It's laced with not... I forget what you said, but it's hydrochloric acid. That's from the, a chemical interaction with the, of the hot lava and the seawater. It's hydrochloric acid. And then the, the lava that's going in the ocean, it, it chills and it breaks up. And as a result, there, there are these tiny particles of volcanic glass in that plume. So it looks rather innocuous. It's a billowing white plume, but it's, um, it's pretty corrosive. Um, in fact, the corrosivity is about that of a dilute. When you're in the immediate area of the ocean entry, it's it's about as corrosive as, as uh, dilute uh, battery acid. And so as the wind blows it, of course, it, it dissipates. And you can just, I mean, you can visually, you can see this as that plume is blown away. It gets thinner and thinner. And then you just see, you know, like it gets down to a width. But even the wispy edges of the plume, um, you know, you can feel the effects of the lays. Um, you know, it can steam your eyes, your nose. Uh, you know, you can sometimes, uh, you can see, um, little sparkles on your skin, that's the glass falling out on your skin. Um, and so if, if that's happening, you're, you're too close and should not be in that area. As far as, I, d I don't know exactly where people are living and how close they are. Again, it depends on the wind direction and their relative distance from that. But certainly in the immediate area of the, of the ocean entry, um, the delays is not a good thing to be in. And even, even the wispy edges you should try to avoid. Thank you. Is there a, a safe distance, radius or something? No, we really can't say that. It depends largely on the wind. There's, there's no set number that we can say on that. 
But I can say, generally speaking, uh, for ocean entries, there are many hazards associated associated with ocean entries, and we generally say that you should keep a 300 meter radius uh, from an ocean entry, uh, both inland and seaward, uh, because of these various hazards. Thank you.